Hey, it's Greg Torres. I'm outside of Lakewood, New York, and I came out here specifically in the snow like this to look for a specific plant. Uh, I saw this plant early in the summer. It's got big, kind of like roundish leaves. I mean, really big leaves. And so I, I knew that this was a good site to look locate it. Uh, the plant I'm looking for is skunk cabbage. Scientific name is Simplocarpus fotidius. Fotidius is in like feeded, like it stinks, right? Hence the name skunk cabbage. Uh, in looking for this plant, especially with all the snow cover around like this, um, my first indication was actually this plant, which is the fertile fronds here, and you can see them all along here. These were the fertile fronds of sensitive fern. Now, sensitive fern in particular really likes wet areas and it's called sensitive fern because the ferns, once they get hit with frost, they just kind of die, but they leave behind these fertile fronds. And so I knew, you can see a number of them through here, that this was gonna be a wet area, which is the perfect habitat for skunk cabbage. Now, I searched around and sure enough, here we go, here it is. And I'm really excited to find it uh, because it's kind of a, a hard plant to locate, especially in the snow like this. So this is skunk cabbage, and you can see the area around it is it's kind of already exposed. There's a couple of them. Here's another one over here. You can see the area again. The snow has kind of been melted back. And another one just starting here, along with some deer feces. But you can see it starting here. Skunk cabbage is super unique. It's a thermogenic plant, which means that it actually generates its own heat. How that happens, it, it relies on kind of like cyanide compounds to like make this happen. But it's actually able to melt the snow around it early in the spring like this. So this is one of our earliest spring ephemeral flowers. Okay? So it blooms first and then throws out leaves later on. As you can see, it's a really funky kind of flower, right? It's got, I don't even know how to describe it. It's a spathe. It's in the Araceae family of plants. Okay, the aeroids. Most people might be familiar with this as like Jack in the Pulpit or a Green Dragon. Uh, Aracemia uh, Dracontium is another one that we have in the eastern United States here. But this is uh, another aeroid. Some people may know the Voodoo Lily, which also kind of has a really, really wretched smell. Kind of smells like a dead animal, like carrion. This one also, though, kind of stinks. Skunk cabbage. Smells like a skunk. So if you break at it and kind of break it like this, I can already smell this kind of nasty smell. But as I said, this plant is able to generate its own heat up to 60, I think a little over 60 degrees. So early in the spring like this, it's able to actually melt the snow around it, which is mind-blowing to think about that. In doing this, two things happen. One, the smell... Of the skunky that skunky smell kind of uh is in like enhanced so things around it can kind of smell that that wretched smell but also any insects that may be in the leaf litter around they wake up right and then they look and maybe even travel into the warm part of this flower like this and they hang out there because it's the warmest area around in doing that so this is the spathe the hood part inside is called the spadix which is the actual flowers themselves. And inside here, some insects may just be hanging out, keeping warm. I can actually see steam coming off of this. Um, and then hanging out in there, they, they fertilize the flower. So again, later on, it'll put out these little seeds that are kind of like pea-shaped. And because it's in a wet area, the, the seeds tend to fall in a moist area and either germinate there or travel via water into another location. But you can see it's got this, here's another one. So there's several flowers here. A thermogenic plant. Oh, there's an insect right there, crawling out of it. Just like I was saying, there it is, yep. Very cool. Very active because he's warm. If it was in the snow, he wouldn't be so active. So like I said, uh, early, early insects, some early bees native to the United States may be pollinating this, maybe, probably not. 
more likely flies, which kind of like stinky smelling plants, uh, will be attracted to this. A lot of the aeroids attract flies, again, because of a rotted smell. So this is skunk cabbage, simple carpus, photidius. I'm super excited to see it. Um, it's kind of rare where I'm at in Hamilton County in near Cincinnati, Ohio. I think there's only one site in Hamilton County where it can be found. But uh, I, I saw this earlier in the summer and then the spring uh, via the leaves and I just knew next time I come up to New York, I'm gonna look for this plant. So again, everywhere I've looked in this area that has a melted out area, um, it's been skunk cabbage. So there's quite a colony through here. So um, I'm happy to have found this at the right time of the year. It's an, uh, an ephemeral flower. So it'll disappear pretty quickly. Hey, in my excitement about this plant and finding a good habitat for it, um, I wanted to mention a couple other things. Another great indicator for skunk cabbage habitat is this here, right? It's this beautiful cut marks here. There's several. There's another one right here. Uh, another back in here, right? This here, here as well. This is all beaver damage. So again, uh, Skunk cabbage likes wet areas, and right behind me, over here is a, a nice little waterway. So we got a lot of beaver activity through here, but again, the wet areas are where you're gonna find skunk cabbage. And where did I see it? I just saw some here. And again, see the area melted out? This plant is already generating enough heat to melt out the snow. We dig it back, you can see here. Here it is, it's a little bit difficult to see with this camera angle, I'll take a couple pics and add to it. But if I break this even a little bit, it's got such a nasty, skunky smell. And I may just break this a bit just so that you can see how strange the flower actually is. See all the pollen down in there? You can see the flower itself. It's like a really unique but typical of the aeroid family of plants. And again, I can see steam coming off of this up close. So here's one. Man, it stinks. I saw another somewhere over here. There we go. Again, I'm just kind of, I know the habitat, but then I'm looking for these melted out areas like this. And again, you can see it's melted out. Beautifully. It's actually a little bit, actually it is warm in there. Very cool. Pull back some of the leaves. And here we have a number of skunk cabbage flowers. I can see some insects even on this, right here. Blowflies are one insect that'll be attracted to this. But a number of other insects also. So this is one of our earliest spring ephemeral flowers in the temperate forests especially so this plant ranges from like nova scotia quebec down through most of uh the eastern united states all the way down to i believe in tennessee but in tennessee i think it's an endangered species there um so it's kind of common to find but it's it's very localized in certain habitats another interesting factor about this plant kind of like lilies is it has contractile roots now what that means is that as the roots grow, they actually will try to grow deeper into the soil. They'll pull themselves deeper and deeper into the soil. There might be an adaptation about like frost heave or something like that, but it's kind of difficult to remove these plants once they've been established because the roots are so deep and they're always trying, every year they're digging themselves deeper into the soil instead of out. Well, they also go out, but they're also going deep. Very, very cool plants. Simple carpus, fotidius, skunk cabbage. What a weird habitat. What a weird time of year to find flowers. It's a nice shagbark hickory there too. So it's wonderful.